glad I am to see you again. You dear old thing, said the Duchess, as she tucked her arm effective, affectionately into Alice's, and they walked off together. Alice was very glad to find her in such a pleasant temper, and thought to herself perhaps it was only the pepper that made her so savage when they met in the kitchen. When I'm a Duchess, she said to herself, I won't have any pepper in the kitchen at all. Soup does very well without... Maybe it's always pepper that makes people hot-tempered, she went on, as very much pleased at having found a new kind of rule and vinegar that makes them sour. I only wish people knew that, and they wouldn't be so stingy about it. You know, she had quite forgotten the Duchess by this time, and was a little startled when she heard her voice close to her ear. You are thinking about something, my dear, and that is what makes you forget to talk, I can tell. You just know what the moral of that is. I shall remember it in a bit. Perhaps it hasn't... Perhaps it hasn't won, Alice ventured to remark. Tut, 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 child, said the Duchess. Everything's got a moral, if you only find it. And she squeezed herself up, up to Alice's side as she spoke. There's nothing to what I could say if I chose, said the Duchess. Pray don't trouble yourself to say it any longer than that, said the Alice. Oh, don't talk about trouble, said the Duchess. I make a present. I make you a present of everything I've said as yet. A cheap sort of present, thought Alice. I'm glad they don't give birthday presents like that. Thinking again, the Duchess said. I've got a right to think, said Alice. Just about much right, said the Duchess. A fine day, your majesty, the Duchess began in a low, weak voice. Now I gave you a fair warning, shouted the queen. Either you or your head must be off, and that in about half no time. Take your choice. The Duchess took her choice and was gone in a moment. Let's go on with the game, said the queen to Alice. Then the queen left off quite out of breath and said to Alice, Have you seen the mock turtle yet? No, said Alice. I don't even know what a mock turtle is. It's the mock turtle soup. It's the thing that mock turtle soup is made from, said the queen. I never saw one or heard of it, said Alice. Come on, then, said the queen, and he shall tell you his story. As they walked off together, Alice heard the king say in a low voice to the company general, You are pardoned. Come on, that's a good thing, she said to herself. They were very soon upon Gyopon, lying fast deep in the sun. Up, lazy thing, said the queen, and take this to the young lady to see the mock turtle and to hear his history. I must go back and see after some executions I have ordered. As she walked off, leaving Alice alone in the in the Gyopon, Alice did not quite look at the did not quite like the look of the creature, but on the whole, she thought it would be quite as safe to say with it. I never heard of uglification, Alice, Alice stated. What is it? The guy upon lifted up both ways, its paws in surprise. Never heard of uglifying and examined? You know what to be- beautify is, I suppose. Yes, said Alice doubtfully. It means to make everything prettier. Well then, the guy upon went on. If you don't know what to uglify is, you are a simple simpleton. Alice did not feel encouraged to ask any more questions about it, so she turned to the Mock tur- Turtle and said, What else have you learned? Well, there was a mystery, the Mock Turtle replied, counting off the sub- subjects on his flappers. Mis- mystery ancient that modern would seeography, then drawing. The drawing master was the old conjure eel that used to come once a week. He thought us drawing, stretching, and fainting in coils. What was that like, said Alice? Well... I can't show to you myself, said the mock turtle. I'm too stiff, and the, and the Gyropon never learned it. Head in time, said the, said the Gyropon. I want him the classical master, though. Master, though he was old, an old crab he was. I never went to him, the mock turtle said with a sigh. He taught laughing and grief, so they used to say. So did he. So did he, said the guy upon singing in his turn, and both creatures hid their faces in their paws. How many hours a day do you do lessons, said Alice, in a hurry to change the subject. Ten hours the first day, said the mock turtle, nine the next, and so on. What a curious plan, examined Alice. That's the reason they're called lessons, the guy upon remarked, because they lessen from day to day. This is quite a new idea to Alice, and she thought it would be over, over a little before she made her next remark. Then the eleventh day must have been a holiday. Of course it was, said the Mock Turtle. How did you manage the twelfth? Alice went on eagerly. That's enough about lessons, said the guy upon, interrupted in a very decided tone. Tell her something about the games now.